Hello guys, and yes, we all knew Putin would win his next presidential elections and will be the dictator of Russia for the next 6, 60 or 600 years. And the numbers they've decided to falsify are really high, 87%, higher than it was in 2018. But what frightens me, and I've learned that from lots of comments online, is that many people inside Russia treat this result as a referendum of support for Putin's war against Ukraine and terror inside the country against opposition, the killing of Navalny, 87% demonstrated they support it. I know elections were falsified and we will discuss that later in the video because I remember times of Yanukovych, pro-Russian president in Ukraine and how they tried to apply this administrative pressure. But I want to quote one Russian political observer, perhaps working somewhere in the EU or the United States. She said that in authoritarian regimes, the results of the elections are always very predictable, but the consequences are never predictable. Let's try and think about the potential results, long-term results of these fake elections in Russia, because this will definitely influence Russia, Ukraine and the world. My name is Anna and I vlog daily from Ukraine since the start of the brutal Russian invasion. So if you're new to the channel, you support Ukraine, please subscribe and help us fight against Russian propaganda, fake news and yes, Putin. And my long-time friends, check your subscription status and hit notification button. So during this last three days, with explosions, with lost control over lots of villages and parts of Belgorod and Kursk region, presidential elections continued. Why? Because everyone knew Putin has to win. There were three or four more candidates, but it was obvious all the support of all the people will go to the acting dictator. Unfortunately, there are millions and millions of Russians who do like Putin's style, but the majority of them are depoliticized. And I do like how philosopher Vlad Vexler speaks about that on the channel analyzing some complicated processes inside Russian population that is not society at the moment. But let's focus first on how they falsified the results. First of all, they have electronic votes that started during COVID pandemics and now allow lots of falsified results and collecting of the information. Second, they always use administrative resource hospitals, universities, libraries, and in Russia there are lots of state institutions, there are lots of students even, and they are all forced to vote for one and only Kremlin Goblin. I remember that back in times of Yanukovych when I was a student and people were very much advised to vote or even to take photos of the votes that they've made. Yes, this is what happens when you lose democracy. Don't you doubt it is the best form of uh, state organization. So anyway, also they have decided to include temporarily occupied parts of Ukraine and population. And they have counted that there are 4.6 million voters on that territory, which is total absurd because these are the numbers pre-war. These are the numbers even before 2014, when this region was living its normal life. Of course, during war, people abandoned the territories. These are very frightening numbers, but for example, Kherson had 400,000 people, and now, even after its liberation, but being on the front lines, being constantly shelled, it has like 40, 50,000 people left. So, of course, in Donetsk, Luhansk, part of Kherson region and part of Zaporizhia region, they don't have 4.6 million voters, but they will definitely count them. Remember to subscribe if you're new to the channel to demonstrate your solidarity with Ukraine and to see Russia defeated. Because by such deceives, by such manipulations, they also sign their own death sentence. Because 87%, come on guys, this is too many even for uh, Putin. And what is also typical for authoritarian and Soviet regimes, that people always vote. Yes, they have registers of dead souls, just like Mykola Hohol's novel. 
and uh, somehow they don't cross out these dead people who may be dead for 10, 20 years and they uh, allow them to vote. And how will you check that if uh, all the uh, people who count the votes are Kremlin controlled and there are no international observers in Russia for decades? Just imagine that your great, great grandparents can vote for Putin 50 years after they've actually died of 10 or I don't know, maybe all of this hundreds of thousands of dead Russian soldiers who are now rotting in the soils of Ukraine also voted for Kremlin Goblin. But what did frighten me really is that many people inside Russia and in the world treat this election, lack of protest, lack of real reaction as a referendum and the results of referendum according to Putin's view demonstrate 87% of support of war in Ukraine and 87% of support of repressions and neutralizing of uh, opposition, just as he did with Navalny. Think about that. Less than a month before the elections, fake elections, the main opponent dies, is killed in prison. And um, oil refineries destroyed, on fire, drones, Ukrainian flying all across Russia and uh, two regions uh, losing control and votes continue and 87% demonstrate their support to Putin back to communism. I do uh, remember reading the stories about communist votes. I did not know, I was, too, I was not born back in that time, but I remember my grandparents saying like when they voted, with no choice at all. Like you just have one surname and you say yes or no. And of course, all people say yes. And um, to some extent, all the country is dead. All the country is dead and all of these people, even those who are alive, they are dead souls. They don't have real choice. And um, once again, I've read in the comments below the description of this voting process that actually all of those people who came to vote, they are not voters. Like real voters, they ignored, uh, they tried to spill some green liquid or to set on fire uh, bulleting boxes. But guys, this is definitely um, not enough. What also bothers me is that various countries start saying that these elections are very uh, dis these elections are very doubtful, the results are not that representative, but they still call these elections when it is total BS and the start of a new authoritarian, totalitarian era. And it's really painful to watch how miserable those people are when they cannot simply call a spade a spade. Putin is an international criminal. There is an order. He is um, awaited in The Hague. We know war crimes. We've seen everything like in online mode. We know these elections are fake. We know he neutralized Navalny. We know there is no opposition. We know there are repressions and other things. We know he cooperates with North Korea. And we still say elections, new president, new presidential term since 2000. Putin is the president. It's not okay. Like it's his fifth term. No one normal will remain at power for that long. And according to this new constitution, Putin can be the president till 2036. If he continues and all of us demonstrate this tolerance, I, I think there will be no world at all. So that's why if you can influence something, do persuade. This is not elections. This is not new president. This is not even a president. This is just a Kremlin gobbling, a bully that wants to destroy the world because he cannot build, he cannot create, he cannot develop, he can only loot, rape, destroy. And um, how can he actually reach the level of uh, the countries around him? By Not by growing up inside Russia, but by destroying everything around. And that's painful and that's bad. Let me know in the comments below, what do you think these results, the six more years of Putin's stardom will bring to Russia and the world? 
Thank you for buying me coffees, becoming my patrons. This means a lot to me and gives lots of motivation and opportunities to continue working. Subscribe to my Instagram, X, threads and join our Discord community. And remember, we have a beautiful merch shop with lots of items that work well as reminders and conversation starters about Ukraine. And all the links that you need are in the description of this video. But most importantly, we have to stay united and we have to finish this evil because it's not okay when criminals like Putin are proclaimed presidents in the largest country of the world. It is very wrong. Slava Ukraini!